This is Russ Douglas 222 with uh, Bruce, that's Phoenix from the NV Forum. And we're just looking, at, this is Stonehaven Harbour, and uh, we've made sure the cliffs are in between us and the sun. So we're not going to get any direct sunlight while testing these thermals. If I zoom in, my phone. There's a big tower on top of the top of the pier with a sort of black thing in top of it, black block, just above the sign that says speed limit three knots. Yeah. So I've got, we've got that, and that's showing a small heat source. So that's Bruce's point of reference for this. For this. So, so yeah. Br so. so first up is the Pulsar XQ 23V. So XQ 30. Not, not a massive I it's front lens. XQ 23, but I mean. No, I thought it was the XQ 30, but what do I know? I must admit, the objective doesn't even look like it's an inch. Right, it's an f1.4 lens. Right. That's why. Now with that, I can just about make out that hot spot on top of the pole, just. But the image is not particularly clear. It's quite blurry. Uh, there's a car on the on the pier, which again is not particularly distinct. Um, not not okay. You, you know, you could just about make out that wee blob, but. It's, not not much more than just about. What I'll do is I'll record in a second. We've got the Yukon NPR recorder hooked up there. So I'll record a few seconds of that and I'll I'll splice that in here so you get to see what Bruce is looking at. Plus of course it's got an unusual pulsar thing about calibrating whenever it decides it needs to calibrate. Oh um, it freezes. There's a click freezes. and then the whole That's thing right. freezes. That's right. For a few seconds. Okay, so I've looked at it through that. I'm not gonna look it through the pad. This is the PARD SA25, on, currently on loan from PrecisionNightVision.com. And this is night and day. This is much, 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 much better. A much clearer image, sharper, much better defined. The little hotspot is very clear. The car is much clearer. The whole image is a much more pleasurable thing to look at, much more definition. Now, we haven't really played with this thing yet in terms of trying to tweak the the performance this is just straight out of the box and it's it's bloody good it really is i'm so, seriously impressed with the image in this thing and the price at the rrp of this from precisionnightvision.com is 2050 i believe so just over two even, grand even with that up at four times digital zoom okay it's pixelated which you'd expect but it's not bad Excuse any noise interference, we're right beside the beach here, beside the shoreline. What I can't do, I'm afraid, viewers just yet, is bring you any footage from inside this uh, thermal rifle scope because PARDs have got this unique connectional, basically video out on the side, and we haven't been able to uh, determine what. Yeah, we haven't been able to determine what uh, connection it is yet. When we do, we'll hook up a cable. If we don't, if it's not, if we get to uh, do that before we return it, have you been able to find any uh, wild birds to focus oh, I'm sort on? Of for something in the trees up there. Oh, something there. Let me see what that is. If you look behind you, you might see some people. Yeah, I was in the distance. There we go. There's some people over there. Some sightseers. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a few sightseers up there on the cliff. Just run away. This would do Remy. This would definitely do rimfire. Yeah. I would say so. Yeah. Even though, even though it only goes up to four mag. Oh, but the base mag is, is not that high. It's quite a wide field of view. Um, but what I'm, what I'm, I'm trying to get an idea for. I'm thinking about what, what would a rabbit sized target look like at 100 yards? Yeah, well if there's any fat seagulls around. Well there's a bloke walking on the far side over there by that white door. <sighs> yeah, I could shoot some easy. <laughs> Four times mag. So you've got a nice clear view of that. On that field, just to the left of there, there is, there's a... 
Yeah, that, there's a farmhouse there. Oh, look, that's, that's probably where it is then. Yeah. It's picking that up okay. I'm really, really, really impressed with this. This, you know, the quality of the image is up, it's sharp. There's a lot of detail, there's a lot of contrast. For a 25, and it's a 25mm lens, so the magnification is not that high. But, bloody hell, it's good. Dave Wells got a, a, a Pulsar Helion XQ38, right, which is yeah. like the next step up. Yeah. And the image quality is nothing like as good as this. Right. It is, this is, maybe it's the kind of the day we're at, I don't know, but it, the picture is absolutely first class. Just let me hear. Let me, let me, what I'll try and do, viewers, is I'll... Now, this is Bruce's homemade uh, thermal scope with a 50mm lens. So this is a, a much bigger lens, but it's got the same... Am I right in saying it's got the same detector, Bruce? Yeah, same 70 micron 384 by 288 sensor. And honestly, the, the sharpness and the clarity of the image is better on the par than it is on this. Right. This is, this is much better than the Pulsar, and obviously it's more magnified, but the image doesn't pop out with you the way that it pops out with you with the part. Yeah. That's, I think that's really what surprised me most. It's just, that, you know, the, the image really just, it just pops out with you. Yeah. How good it is. I'm, bo I'm gobsmacked. I need to start playing with some of the controls here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to try it in different modes. I'm going white hot at mode. Yeah, white hot's my preference. Black hot. Okay, we get too much, too much contrast there for black hot. Right, this is red hot. So, uh, I've never been a big fan of these fancy colour modes. That's it, that's it in sort of full colour mode. Yeah, I couldn't deal with that. <laughs> the sky. Sky's interesting. Let's see what's. Let's try something. My understanding of its sky was it's supposed to stop the image of the land losing contrast when you get a lot of sky in the picture. Yeah, when you're on the, the horizon. Sky, the sky is normally cold compared yeah. to the land. So when you look at something with a lot of sky in it, the the, the sensor has to basically display all of the, the re full range of temperatures it can see. Yeah. So because it's seen a lot of cold stuff, the much warmer land gets compressed into a smaller section of the overall range, which means you lose a lot of detail and contrast. Now I thought sky mode was maybe supposed to help with that. So I thought this, what I'm doing is I'm looking basically at the land in the sky, the land in the sky, the land being warmer than the sky. Yeah. So at the moment, if I go Right up onto the sky, I can see the clouds. When I come down onto the junction between the land and the sky, I lose the clouds, the sky goes black, and the land is pretty much all white. When I come down and get rid of some of the sky, I can start to see more detail in the land. And what is the, if that's in sky mode. Let's see what happens when we go to quite hot mode. No difference. In terms of this little test, I can't see any difference between sky and quite hot. But maybe, uh, maybe there's something more subtle going on that I haven't figured out yet. Okay, here's, here's a seagull. Oh, what was, oh, 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 bad. Right. You see that bloody clearly? I mean, I'm on times one at more. I've got times two. Honestly, on times four, that would be a perfectly acceptable target. I could shoot that near bother at that. Excellent. My, my, my first impression is that even though it's only a 25mm lens and the magnification is not that high, and we're, I've got a, I'm a slightly skeptical about Fard's claims for the magnification, the, the image is just absolutely first class. And I'm just wondering how much of that has got to do with them using this high resolution uh, display. Yeah. They've gone to this 1024 by 768 display. Yeah. And it's just absolutely super. I, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm just looking at some of these. You want one for Christmas, basically? Fucking 45, I might be interested. Yeah, the, 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 
obviously there's, the... a, there's a sharpness about that image that that doesn't have. Right. There's a clarity in that in, in, the, in the card image. Okay, it's a it's a, a brand new model. It's quite possible they've got their firmware up, firmware working better in terms of how they process the signal from the sensor. Yeah. But you know, they've, for me, they've got it right. Yeah. If the, the bigger lens, the bigger lens uh, versions give the same quality image, and there's no reason why they can't, because all you're doing is putting a bigger lens in it and getting more magnification. Yeah. Then that's going to be. Yeah. So this is the SA25, and I'll I'll include a link down below to the spec, the technical specs of the range, but there's the SA19 with a 19mm objective lens, for, even more for short range, sort of ratting, air rifle ratting activity. There's the SA, up from this one, there's the SA35 with a 35mm objective, and the SA45 with a 45mm objective. Now those two, last two especially, have got correspondingly um, a narrower field of view, and more magnification, and, more magnification and better Better distant, long-range identification yeah. values for, yeah. for prey. Exactly. You'll be, you would, with the 35, particularly with the 45, you would be, you could potentially be into some fairly mid to long-range foxing. Yeah, excellent. Um, and they're not much more expensive than this one. No. And, and, and I would say, I mean, going by the price that you sent me, the the 45 mil with the built-in rangefinder would be some bit of kit. <laughs> that would be some bit of kit. I mean, obviously this has got the latest firmware. When you hit the rangefinder button here, you get you get the box, but obviously you don't get any numbers because no. there's no module attached. No. So um, it's going to be the same style of display as the OO8. Yeah. For sure. And the the LRF version of each SA model, thermal model, is uh, two 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 hundred quid more. More than the non LRF. Yeah. The the, the SA45 with the with the LRF, it's what, something like 2650, was it? Now, so, yeah, the SA45 with no range finder, the price from precisionnightvision.com, the RRP quoted is 2450, so it's 2650 with, with the range finder. So based upon this SA25, <laughs> you're thinking that'll be the dogs. Oh, I think that'll be the... And by the way, I'm just starting to get a little bit of heat from that ship on the horizon, just a wee white blob. Okay, the other thing is we... We did actually measure the diameter of the lens. Yeah. Um, Bard say this is a, the 25 and the SA25 means that the focal length of the lens is 25 millimeters. Yeah. In other words, the, the image focuses 25 millimeters behind the, the lens. Yeah. And they also say that the lens is what they call F1, which is a, a measure of the aperture. And if the lens is F1, then the diameter of the lens is the same as the focal length. So we measure the diameter of the lens at 27 millimeters. So their claim for an F1 lens is probably valid and their claim for it being 25 millimeter focal length is also pretty much valid. So... But you, uh, you're uh, impressed. And, and the, the, yeah, the, the other thing is of course with when you get the F1 lenses they're fast but they don't have much depth of field. But this has got good depth of field. I can, I'm focused on, on a faraway object, for example the we blob at the end of the pier yep. yet even stuff how close can it actually focus oh I think you can focus on your knee yeah but without changing the focus ah right okay depth of field so that car there is what ten, less than 10 meters away and it's still in, still in focus oh stand there okay No problem. You wouldn't have to be changing the focus all the time for targets at different distances. Excellent. So again, that's another. That's a plus point. I've got I've got a, a, a homemade thermal with a hundred millimeter lens in it, and it's a fantastic thing. But you're continually having to change the focus to get stuff even just quite close together. Yeah. To, to not drop out of focus. <laughs> you know. It's a spotter, that's brilliant. <laughs> it's a spotter, that is brilliant. And there's a scope, and there's a scope. I have no reason to doubt that it'll be equally brilliant. Um, so while you're on camera, um, how many reticles are there, do we think? There are, hold on a minute, let me get into the reticle menu. Zero, I'm in the zero in menu now. Yep. There are A to J, 10 different uh, 
set, set up you can save. Right. Between X, between vertical position, colour and style. Um, yeah, that's ten. Right, let me let me see. So reticle styles, no reticle. Simple cross, cross with float and centre, T with float and centre, cross with mill dot bars, cross with more mill dot basically the same reticles as the latest version of the 08. Yeah. In the 08 LR. Eh? That's the version V1.25 firmware. Yeah. Now let me go back to that. Let me go to colour. Red, they believe it or not, they call red A Z A R I and Azarin, whatever. Alright. Uh, right, now that's a weird though. The colour's black, but the reticle is actually white. And when you go to white reticle, it stays white, so there's not actually a black reticle. Um, so you can have white, you can have red, you can have yellow. That's the three colours. They're supposed to be black, but I haven't, I kind of find black. Uh, so, and you can see it there. Okay. Let's try the hot track. Um, oh yeah, hot track. Yeah, that's hot. No, it's a laser. It is quite easy to switch the visible red laser right. on. Yeah. Okay, I've got hot track working now. And I'm looking at a boat and I just jumped right off the screen to a car away down the pier. I'm really dubious about the benefit of this hot track system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Basically, the hot track puts a, a red, a floating red circle. On the, um, hot, on the hottest Whatever the hottest thing on the view is. Yeah, the warmest object in the, within the view. And so it jumps back and forth to whatever the warmest object is. Which is very lazy basically. We can't see the we can't see a massive point of it, but I'm sure some people love it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be I'm trying to be positive here, and I suppose really if you had a it might help to pick up something you don't immediately see with your eye. Right up here. If you were looking at a fairly blind area and there was something and there was there was something that you maybe didn't Ah there you go then you see? That's it. Up here you see for that three is in the horizon, up there. Yeah. Just to the right of that's a single pole. Yep. Slightly down to the right there's a something a bit warmer there. Okay? This the hot truck just jumped straight for it. Okay. As I scanned across here. So there's something warm up there. Yeah, the hot truck just jumped straight onto it. Okay. But, you know, I can see it without the hot truck. Yeah. I don't need a hot truck to see that. Well, I'm thinking maybe the hot truck is if you had lots and lots and lots of objects. It's going to pick the hottest one. If some of them are stones in a field that are warm from the sun and one of them's a rabbit, it might help you differentiate. It, it might. You need to try that and see. It might. Yeah. Depending on how hot they are. Oh, I didn't. I didn't set the pip. Let me set the pip. Oh yeah. So I've just been doing full screen digital zoom. Right. So you've got with this uh, gadget, you've got the base zoom is times one, and you t press the zoom button, which is the magnifying glass button, button one, nearest one to the, to the front, and it, the whole screen goes to plus times two digital zoom or times four and then another press and it goes back to normal. If you go into the menu and switch PIP on, when you press the zoom button after that, the pip, the pip box pops up and just the pip is magnified times two and then times four. So while shooting, that gives you the chance to, uh, you can, with your peripheral vision, you can be observing what's in the foreground and what's left and right, while at the top you might be getting the, the trying to get the, the reticle uh, centered on your prey. Be it rabbits yeah, or rats or whatever. Nicely. You like the pip, yeah? Right, right. I mean, it's, it's essentially similar to the to the the pip setting and so on. Is the same as the 08. 08 like LRF, like the fact yeah. That multiple presses let you take the pip off, so you, you've got no pip. Pip with times two, pip with times four, and the main screen always stays in times one. Yeah. I, I quite like that actually. Yeah. I think same that's, here. That's a, that's a nice way of doing it. It's probably better than they did it in the 08. Right. Yeah. Um, that's a, that's yeah, yeah, I can see the benefit of that. Yeah, I can. Just gobsmack with the image quality. It's fantastic. Really, I can't believe how good this is for the money. <laughs> it's, honestly, it's so bloody sharp. It's so contrasty. So what I'm going to try and do next, viewers, is trying to get use my mobile phone 
and try and get some imagery through this fella. But um, we have a slight issue in that there's no uh, quarter inch UNC tripod thread, camera tripod thread underneath it. So we're going to balance it on some objects so it doesn't get scratched and then try and hold the camera still behind it. I'll try and get you some footage because I want to bring you all the reticles and the, all the different um, thermal settings and try and get you an, an idea of the clarity of this thing, it's amazing. For 2050 or 2250 with the uh, from PNV, precisionnightvision.com with the uh, with the late rangefinder module on the side and the rangefinder distance is on screen, it's pretty damn good. I'm thinking for something like ratting or rabbits, use the PIP, aiming with the PIP crosshair and if you, something runs out in the foreground you know it's there. So yeah, I like only the pit box zooms. So this is me recording with my mobile phone held up against the back of the Pard SA25. It's on white hot mode. And try and turn it around. That white object there is a car that just drove past. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is we don't yet have a, a communication cable to to hook into the pards video out. Let's pull that against lamppost. Gentleman going to do one of his boats. Very crisp. So now I've got the pip on. I'm trying to do this as best I can. So that's two times zoom on the pip. Press the pip again. Okay, the video that Rush just shot through the eyepiece of the part, we've just reviewed it and it's absolutely excellent. And I'm, I'm actually thinking that the video you're going to see from Russ's phone is probably better than you would get if you'd hooked up a video recorder to the output. Um, the, the video recorder we plan to use, the yep. Yukon MPR, only, the best it can do is record at um, what's called D1 resolution, which is... 756 by 572 um, standard definition. Yeah. Um, and when you play that back up on YouTube, it's probably not going to look as good because you've recorded that basically more better than 4K. Yeah. So I think what you've recorded through there is actually going to look better than it would do. Right. Recorded on that and then put on put onto YouTube. Uh, yeah. Plus, it's kind of real, isn't it? Aye. It's it's like it's Aye. like the, the viewer's eye view through the scope. Yeah, so absolutely. This, this I, is, I think that's a better way of doing it. Yeah. What I'd like to do is compare that, that, and that. Use, okay, we'll do that in a second. Because just to explain, this is my Pulsar Quantum XQ30V thermal spotter from Scott Country International. It's a 30mm lens, and I've basically got a, a Yukon MPR video recorder velcroed to the side of it. And oops, there's a lorry going past. And my friend Hato, who's an audiovisual whiz kid basically, he made this cable. So there's a, a video out here from the Pulsar Quantum XQ30V and a 2.5mm TRRS jack plug video in to the Yukon MPR recorder. So that's the, this, is, this is what I recorded all the, the early videos on my channel, the early black and white videos of rat hunting. I, I recorded on this compared to the photon RT scope so if you'll have to switch yes right. look at something this is an XQ 30 V yeah so that means it's got a 30 millimeter focal length lens yeah look at the size the diameter of the lens compared to the part right the part has got a much larger diameter lens yep. what it tells you is that the fo that this might be 30 mil focal length but the aperture the F number is a lot lower. I think this is f1.4. 
Right. So, which means it's 30 divided by 1.4. If we measure that when we get back, it's going to be just over 20, 22 mil. So that's not letting as much heat in as that is. Yeah. This is also this is going to be more sensitive to changes in temperature, which may be one of the reasons why this performs apart so poorly against the part. Yeah. Now the part might be, some people will say, but hang on, the Pulsar when I bought it a year ago was 1100 quid and the part's 2050. Uh, but, yeah, that's, that's true. And the, the Pulsar is last year's technology and it's only a spotter, but... This is a scope. But that's, a, that's a rifle scope. The part is a rifle scope with digital zoom two times and four times. The XQ30V has five times and ten times, which is held pixelated. Um, well, this is a full-on rifle scope that we're using as a spotter right now. So what we'll do now is we'll record, try and record a comparative image between the Pulsar, the Pad, and Bruce's DIY 50mm scope, which has the same core, for, same sensor well, actually, as the Pad. Actually, they've all got the same sensor. They've all, all right. got three. All three devices have got a 384 by 288 pixel 17 micron core. Right. So, and I and I would lay money that they probably pretty much all come from the same place. Probably all Euless cores. Um, but it's the lens you use and how you process the signal that's making the difference here. Right. The differences are in the focal length of the lenses and in the aperture of the lenses. In other words, how much heat they can actually let in, and finally in the type of near eye display that they're using. Uh, this is an OLED. These are two. LCDs, but the part is using a much higher resolution display than either of the other two. Um, obviously, the way that they process the signals makes a difference to the final image as well. Right. So, this is me recording through the pulsar, and we're looking. And um, you're basically focused on the red car, I believe. <laughs> the pulsar focus doesn't do anything. Oh, well, sorry. You're, you're pointing at the red car. I've, yeah, I've, I've run the focus control one they're at one end of and I see no difference. Okay, and if I if you can angle it slightly upwards, then the car's in the middle of the screen, and then we'll do the same for the other two. So this is the footage recorded on my mobile phone through the Pulsar Quantum XQ30V with the car in the middle, just to try and give you some comparison. So now I'm recording the same car through Bruce's DIY. 50mm lens thermal scope, uh, bigger lens but the same detector, the same core. Yeah, same core. Uh, okay, and oh, someone's about to walk past, which is quite handy. So that's someone walking Just past. Just approaching the car, really? Yeah, roughly. Just to give you an idea of quality for comparison purposes. Oh, try and keep the camera, mobile phone still. Okay, so this is leaning against the same lamppost, directing the same car. This is the same car recorded through the PARD SA25 thermal scope, recorded to my mobile phone, all handheld, just for a direct comparison between all three. And I love the water in the foreground flickering away. It's a really wide angle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, so, Hopefully, that's giving you the same image as the other two. Is that right? Yep, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Thank you, thanks, Bruce. Uh, just wanted to show you guys when I'm stood there with one crutch trying to record this thing without wobbling. That's why, sorry about the wobble on that video, but uh, hopefully, you can make sense of it. Cheers.